So we're going to talk today about something called recursive formulas. And if you look at your packet, you'll see that there are two recursive formulas up at the top. There's an arithmetic and there's a geometric. So let's look at the first example that we do have there. If you look about halfway down that first page, it says, so let's try the, to find the recursive formulas for the following. So let's say we have these two um, series. The first one, let's look at it, is arithmetic. Now, basically, when you're making a formula for an arithmetic series, it's a two-part series, a two-parter. So what you're going to do is you're going to say a sub 1 equals, and whatever your first term is, is what you're going to write. So in this case, we're going to write negative 12. Then the second part would be a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. Now, notice it says plus d. So you just look at your series and you ask, okay, what am I adding by every single time? And you should see that you're adding by 3. And this is your recursive formula. It really is that simple. Okay? So let's look at the geometric. It's the same deal, essentially, except for one minor change. So again, your recursive formula is a two-parter. So it always starts with a sub 1. And in this case, our a sub 1 is 2. That's our first term. Then you're going to write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. And then if you look at the formula for a geometric series, it's times r. So you look at your series and you ask yourself, OK, what am I multiplying by each time? And in this case, I'm multiplying by 3. And that is my recursive formula. OK? So that's all there is to that. Let's look, if you would turn the page and look at the back of the first page. And I'd like to just try a couple of those. All right, so if you see on um, the back of the first page, they're basically just asking you to find your recursive formula. Now, after that, it's saying find the three terms in the sequence after the last one given. Well, if you look, for example, number one gives you that a sub one is negative four, and it tells you that the r is six, so all you're gonna do is multiply by, by six each time, okay? So then your a sub 2 should be, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one, but okay, anyway, um, we're going to get negative 24 because negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Then you're going to do the same thing for a sub 3, and then you're going to do the same thing for a sub 4. You're going to multiply negative 24 times um, 6, and let's see what we get there. So I'm going to take out my calculator, and I'm going to do negative 24 times 6, and I'll get negative 144. And then I'm going to multiply that times 6, and I'm going to get negative 864. So that's all that first section wants from you, numbers 1 through 6. Okay? Now, let's look at 7 and 8, and I'll just do number 7 for you, and then you can do number 8. But number 7 gives you a recursive formula. That's the first line there, the a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 10. And it gives you the first term. So it's telling you the first term is 29. And what it wants you to do is find the first four terms. So we already have the first one. So all we need to do is find the second, the third, and the fourth. Well, if you look at the first equation that they gave you, they told you that the d was 10. So all you're going to do is add 10 every time. So we're going to get 39, 49, and 59. And that would be your answer for number 7. Now, let's shoot down to number 9, because that one's just a little bit different. Not hard, but just different. So in this part, what they're doing is they're giving you a part to a recursive formula. Okay? And what they want you to do is find the first four terms. So if I wanted to find a sub 1, do you notice that what they've given you is they've given you that n is 1? So then what you're going to do is everywhere you see an n, you're going to put in a value of 1. And then from there, you're going to add 1. So your a sub 1 would be 3. There we go. Now, you're going to use this formula again to find a sub 2. But now this time, your n would be 2. So wherever you see an n, instead of putting in a 1 this time, you're going to put in a 2. And then you're going to add 1. So your a sub 2 would be 5. Alrighty? And then we're going to just keep going to do your a sub 3. 
So in this case, your n is 3, so we're going to do 2 times 3. And, whoops, we are going to add 1, so our a sub 3 would be 7. All right? And then you're going to keep going, and you're going to do a sub 4 as well. And your a sub 4, if you plug it in n equals 4, you will end up getting 9. And you're going to do that for every section. The last thing I want to look at is the word problems. And if you see, the, I'm going to do the first one. It says, Melanie takes a job for a base salary of $60,000. She has the option to get a $1,500 raise every year for eight years or take a 5% raise every year after the first year for eight years. And which is the better option? Well, if we just look at the problem and we see that, let's, let's say we take the option of getting $1,500 raise every year for eight years. Basically, what that is is an arithmetic um, sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the explicit formula for the arithmetic. Okay, and the reason why it's arithmetic is because we're adding $1,500 onto her salary every year after the first year. So basically what she's doing is, is she's starting with a base salary of $60,000, so that's her A sub 1. Plus, now, what she's going to do is, n is the number of years, so that's going to be 8 minus 1, and her d would be 1,500. Let's squeeze that in there, okay? And then we just solve, so a sub n equals 60,000, plus, and then the 7 times 1,500, which would be 10,500. Oops, I think I left out a 0 back there. There we go. And so then... After eight years, this is how much she would make. Now that's taking the $1,500 raise. Okay. So since the next one talks about a 5% raise, remember with percents you would multiply. So that's going to be a geometric series. So let's look at that one. So we're going to use the explicit formula for a geometric series, and we get a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Oops, n minus 1. There we go. Alrighty, so in this case, our n is going to be 8 equals, again, our starting salary is $60,000. Now, with our r here, she's starting with a base salary of $60,000. That's 100% of her salary for that year. And then we are going to be tacking on a 5% beyond that. So when we put in our R, we put in 1.05, okay, because we've got the 5%, that's the 0 0.05, plus the 100% that we started with, the 60,000 that we started with, so that's 1.05. And then again, our N is 8 minus 1. And then just please be careful here. I want you to make sure that you do this in your calculator first. So you're going to do 1.05 to the seventh power. Okay, so you want to do that part first. So we're going to get 60,000, and we're going to multiply that by 1.40710, so on. And then your final salary after eight years with the 5% raise should be 84,000. $426 and approximately three cents. So you can see clearly that the better bet would be to take the 5% raise. Okay, and you're gonna try the second question.